We're running a NATO exercise, specialist exercise in uh, chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, explosive uh, material. Um, it's for specialists that form uh, uh, the NATO uh, CBRN specialist forces for the NATO reaction force. Uh, they contribute different capabilities in that specialty, including laboratories that are here uh, supporting the exercise as well. And I'm the head of a mobile bio laboratory. Um, which brings diagnostic measures into the field, very sophisticated uh, assays for diagnostics of infectious diseases. Like always in a multinational uh, environment, so there are different solutions for quite the same question, but uh, that's very interesting to learn and uh, to provide our solutions, so that's, that's a good thing. Well, all the nations are contributing different capabilities to each of the task forces. And that's one of the key goals of the exercise is that interoperability, being able to work together and uh, communicating uh, between the teams. Working with the other forces have been fantastic. Everyone's cooperating really well. We're all learning off of each other and teaching each other. Yeah, plus you can also say that everything is good. We're going to be We'll be actually on spot over here with all the nations. This is the network. It begins over here. You see friends and you make new friends. This is important because this is a small world. You see the world is a small world. You find one at fault. We had to go through a French Army decon line somewhere in real life. We'd know roughly what their procedures are, what our guys could expect going through. Uh, at the same time, the Spanish and Germans would know what to expect when they come through our process. So, sort of a standard operating procedure is we always look for uh, explosive devices first, then we'll assess for biological, chemical, or radiological threat. So in the scenario today, we've only seen signs of biological so far. But we still, at each location, will check for all three again, just as due diligence. This is one part of the command post, which we um, do the current operations, let, let's say. so. Uh, if you have units outside, we know exactly where, what, how many, what they are doing, and they send messages back, and we can deal with it. What it allows the uh, scientists and technical staff to do is see the uh, way the operators operate in an actual field situation versus a lab situation. So they're able to take that experience and bring it back to the laboratory. At the same time, they're able to pass on their knowledge and expertise in each of those areas onto the operators.